unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. James Held at Eiffel, TVMTK Global. With me, I've got the father son combination that is Tony Sims and Charlie Sims. How are we? We're good. Yeah, good. good. Thanks, John. It's not often we get you both together in the same video to have a little bit of a chat. What, what's happening in the world of Sims? Uh, pretty busy at the moment. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Connor's just fought. Uh, we had uh, Joe Caldina fight a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that was on the Joshua undercard. It was on the Joshua undercard. And a few weeks before that, we had uh, Ted Cheeseman and. Uh, Felix Cash, so we've been busy and then what yeah. have we got next? So we had Kez Ashfak on tonight. Um, good win for Ashfak? Yeah, good win for Ashfak. He was Ricky Starkey. I think if it would have been a six rounder, he probably would have got him out of there, but I think it was a good, uh, good learning fight for him, to be honest. Please give the stoppage win for Connor Ben against Chris Truman. That, did you expect that? Did you in anticipate Connor getting to him eventually? I thought, he, I thought it was a good learning fight for him. Yeah, it was more a confidence booster for him. You know, I think. Uh, the last fight. Uh, it was great like, fight to watch, by the way. It was a great fight to watch, but I think before before that fight, he was like dealing with everybody with ease, and then he got into like a, a brutal fight with uh, sort of Pinoid, Pinoid, and Pinoid, we didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think he anticipated that happening, but sometimes they do do you good them sort of fights where you learn that not everyone just gets blown over. Mm. So obviously he's gone back to the gym and. Uh, Gone back to the drawing world and he's working on more defensive stuff. You know, I'd like to have him to move his feet more tonight and uh, box longer range tonight. Uh, but as I say, it's more of a confidence booster getting back into the uh, ring, getting a win, uh, getting a knockout, and then just like go back to the drawing board again next week and start again over new stuff, really. What's the dynamic like in the gym? We've got an older head as well as some younger heads coming through, the likes of Ricky Burns, obviously, mm. tremendous example to the other lads in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you find it helpful? Do the, do the younger boys find it helpful having that, that experience and that voice of reason alongside yourself, Tony, in, in the gym? Yeah, of course. Like, you've got Ricky. You've got John Ryder in there, who's an old hand now. He's got a big fight coming up next uh, week after next. And Martin J. Ward, who's, uh, who's getting the experience right now. So, and yeah, and then obviously you've got the young ones coming through: Connor, Joe Caldina, Ted Cheese, and Felix Cash. And uh, you know you've got uh, you got youngsters coming through. So. It's good for all the youngsters to train along with the experienced ones, you know, get the sparring in with them, see how they train for title fights, you know, and, 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 and learn from them really. And that's, you know, that's a good combination at the moment. Do you think boxing's in a good place with the amount of young fighters that are coming through currently? And with the, the development fighters in the sort of the amateur squad at the moment and around the, the development squad, do you think boxing will be in a good place in this country for the next, say, five to ten years? Yeah, I mean, boxing's in a great place at the moment, you know. What Rob McCracken has done up there with GB is phenomenal. You know, before he took over, uh, you know, we had nowhere near the, uh, the medalists that we've, we're getting now, you know, and uh, they're coming out of the amateurs now, like, you know, they're already ready-made pros. You know, fighting five threes on the... Uh, no head guards WSB, as well. No yeah. head guards. Yeah. And they're already, like, ready-made pros, whereas before you'd get, like, an amateur boxer from who was on the England squad, and you know you'd be trying to nurture them like for a year or two just to get them into a pro style, and they're already been ready made for you. So, yeah, boxing's on a massive eye, and that's where it starts really. It starts at that grassroots level, moves up, on, and when they move up, if they go on to the GB level, you know if you're on the GB level, you know you're going to be a good fighter going into the pros. You've had some great fighters throughout the years and you're working with some great fighters. If there's one fighter who's stuck out for you in terms of ability to, to learn, ability to improve, ability to, to undertake instructions, who would that, that one man be? Well, it's hard to say really because you know, I've had a lot of good fighters down the years you know, and uh, they're all different, all fighters are different. You know, and every trainer will tell you that um, you know, some take... Some take uh, some take pro, some do progress quicker than others. You know, it's about being patient with uh, a fighter, and uh, you know, having him in the gym, learning from other fighters. You know, watching him progress. You know, and it's a it's a it's a long drawn out uh, period in the gym that 
that people don't realise what goes on behind closed doors, you know, i.e. for Connor, like, he's been, the last four or five months, he's just been in the gym every day. Just you know, improving, just, just trying, trying to... Just trying to learn, like other trainers will tell you, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, and you put a two or three bits together that month, yeah. you know, and then try that out in the ring, and then a couple of other bits together and try that out in the ring, you know, and it's just like, it's a long progress, a long progress, and you're hoping by the end of it that everything they pick up experience-wise, training-wise, sparring-wise in the gym, you're hoping at the end of it that they become something, you know, like a champion, you know, British, Commonwealth, European, maybe world, you know, and it's, it's a long old road, long process. As well as the boxers coming through, we've got a good line of new trainers as well, with, with fighters yeah. retiring and decided to try their hands at the training. Sure. Kevin Mitchell uh, sure. comes to mind as well, recently becoming sort of a, a full-time trainer himself. What words of encouragement would you give to, to those lads that have now find themselves in a new, new job, new field, getting to grips with the training side, what advice would, would, would you give them? Well, you know, it's a different era of, uh, it's a different era of training now, you know, with uh, all the good fighters that are coming through, you know, they've got big opportunities on big shows, i.e. like tonight, like 25 years ago when I first started training fighters, there was, a lot of them were small hall shows without, without TV and no one was really getting paid a lot of money and you'd have like maybe one or two massive shows that year, Prince Nazim or Ricky Atten, you know, and uh, so boxing's changed a lot now, you know, there's a lot, there seems to be a lot more better fighters about today, and as you say, you've got a lot of young trainers coming through, Jamie and uh, Moore. Jamie Moore's a good yeah, addition, yeah, Jamie Moore's very a good, true. Jamie great Moore, very addition, good you know, and it's Nigel good to Travis see, Nigel Chavis as well, don't yeah, forget yeah. him, yeah. and it's good to see ex-fighters who have been good fighters, then come in and put something back into the training and instead of saying, oh, there's no money in, in the boxing game, I'll do something, turn my hand to something else. Yes. Now they know there's money in a boxing game. So, that, that, you know, to see them fighters, as, as you say, Kevin Mitchell, uh, even Darren Barker's open to boxing gyms at the moment, although he's not uh, training pros, he still kept his hand in at training. It's fantastic. You yeah. know, he's enjoying it. So it's great to see, it's great to see. All right, well, boys, anything you want to add, Charles? No, but the Darren Barker moment was, was was one of those, I think the question that you asked before, yeah. what was one of the fighters that you look back on? I always remember Darren Barker as like one of being in the one of the best moments that we had in boxing when he won yeah. the World Was that time. against Gil? Yeah. I think, I think like, as a fighter, he was a great fighter, but he was just one of the best moments, I think, that yeah. I can remember when he won the World title. That All moment. I think about on that night is Eddie's face. Yeah. Do you know yeah. when the camera yeah, panned to him face. and his eyes were like... <laughs> He's doing that shaking thing. I think, thing I think with Darren, where so he was bad. so injury prone and he, yeah. he was carrying on through his career, obviously. Yeah, bad hip and You stuff. know, his yeah. hips was gone, his elbows was gone, you know, and he kept persevering through the training and every, every camp might have been his last camp, you know. So to go over to the States and uh, win a world title in the States, which, you know, it's a dream really for every, every fighter. And to pick up the middleweight title was like, it was a great, great night, you know. And where I had him from day one, from amateur level, it was a fantastic, fantastic night. All right, gentlemen, anything you want to add before we go? I'm just going to uh, give you the chance of anything you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, thanks for catching us, really. Uh, thanks, James. Thank you very much for your time today. Good seeing you, mate. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, fellas. Three rounds, three minutes, three fights. Unbeaten fighters and major performers, I can't tell you how excited I am about this.